All right. So let's just start the class today. So we had learned matrix multiplication and the inverse of a matrix. In this class, we'll try to look at system of equations and uh, how does the matrix multiplication and invertibility help us to understand things. So this whole chapter is going to depend on that. We'll slowly build up the ideas. So let us uh, start with the basic ideas that we do. So we start with a system of one equation only. So let's look at this example. So consider the system AX is equal to B, where A and B are given and X is unknown. All right. So I have a system here which is A X equal to B. A is a scalar. B is a scalar. So they are real numbers or complex numbers or rational numbers, whatever you want to say. All right. And X is unknown. I want to find X. Fine. So generally we say that the solution is X is equal to B upon A without putting any condition. So now we would just like to look at things carefully. So let's look at certain cases. Case one. If A is 0 and B is also 0, fine, then you are looking at the equation 0 times x is equal to 0. Now, this is true, so this is valid, this is valid for all choices of x. So, I am trying to say that, or equivalent to what I am saying is that. If you take, so choose any x belonging to R, then 0 times x is 0 and the hence whole R is a solution of 0 times x is equal to 0. All right. So, we generally do not worry about this part when we study it, but we need to be careful because we want to generalize ideas. So, therefore, we need to understand what happens at the base basic level and then proceed. All right. So, that the basic level is starting with a equal to 0, what happens to b equal to 0. Now, case 2, a is 0. So, if a is 0, but b is not equal to 0. All right. So, this is a very important case a is 0, but b is not 0. In this case, what happens is that in this case, you are looking at looking at the system 0 times x is equal to b and b is not equal to 0. All right. So, for example, If b is 1, then we are looking at 0 times x is equal to 1 and which has no solution and which has no solution, no solution as, as 0 times any number is 0. All right. So, this case is also taken care of that the first case we see that whole of R is a solution or there are infinite number of solutions. In the second case, I do not have a solution and let us look at the third case when A is not 0. So, case 3, if A is not 0, then the system A x is equal to B has a unique solution x which is given by b upon a. Now, whether b is 0 or not that does not matter to us because since a is not 0, I can divide by a and do all the things. So, in this case I have a unique solution. So, this is the case when I have got only one equation in one unknown. Now, let us proceed with the second example in which we are going to look at two equations in two unknowns. So, example 2, if 
fine. So, what we have learnt is that this case if I look at geometrically then this corresponds to looking at. So, generally we look at lines here. So, any linear system of the type a x plus b y is equal to c represents a line in R 2 fine. I will put exclamation mark here to for you to understand that when such a thing happens. If I put say for example, a is 0, b is 0, do I still make sense? All right. So, it makes sense when either a or b is not 0 and then we proceed and get lines fine. So, you have to be careful when you say that a x plus b y equal to c represents a line. So, there is a pinch of salt that is important for us and you have to be careful. So, now I have got suppose two lines, these two lines could be parallel all right or I could have I have one line here, I have another line here. So, this is line L 1, this is L 2, L 1, L 2 fine. So, here the lines are parallel, here they intersect intersect. It may happen that the two lines are same. So, L 1 and L 2 are same all right. So, these are the cases that we need to look at. So, I will try to see things according to that, but be careful there is one case which you are not writing here where A is 0, B is 0 all right. If A is 0, B is 0 fine then we do not have lines is that ok. So, let us look at examples to understand things. So, numerical examples for us. So, case 1. So, I am going to look at the system x plus y is equal to 2 and x plus 2 y is equal to 3. We know how to solve it, we have already done it. So, if I solve it, what do I get? I can write here x plus y is equal to 2, subtract here, cancel out this x, I will get y is equal to 1, and therefore, this will imply that x is 2 minus y which is 2 minus 1 which is 1. So, I see that. So, therefore, x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 1 is a solution all right. So, there is the point of intersection and it is a unique solution the solution is unique fine. As I pointed out in the first class or I think second class we also said that we would like to look at not just a line, but vector here. So, if I look at the vector corresponding to this two equation these two equations the x part comes from 1 and 1 times x plus 1 comma 2 of y is equal to 2 comma 3 all right. So, once you have already know matrix multiplication. So, you can see that x plus y is 2 and x plus 2 y is 3 these are the two equations. So, I would like you to see that the solution x is equal to 1 and y equal to 1 tells me that 1 1 times 1 plus 1 2 times 1 is same as 1 1 plus 1 2 which is same as 2 3 which is the right hand side of the system of equations all right. So, system of equation it was looking at intersection of lines has given us something about vectors that I can get the vector that I require which is on the right hand side fine. Another example case 2. So, let us look at x plus y is equal to 2 all right and the second equation is and 2 x plus 2 y is equal to 3. Now, you can see here that I have got so x plus y is 2 and again I can rewrite this second equation as x plus y equal to 3 by 2. So, therefore, I get a parallel of pair of parallel lines parallel lines and hence there is no solution and hence no solution fine. 
but in general I cannot talk in terms of parallel lines. So what we do is that again we multiply by 2 and subtract. So I can write use this first equation to write it as 2x plus 2y is equal to 4. Subtract it you get 0 times x plus 0 times y is minus 1. And therefore this has no solution. That is there is no x and y no real number x and y such that 0 times x plus 0 times y will be equal to minus 1. Fine. So, that is the idea that we would like to follow that we would like to get an equation in which finally, we have something from which we can directly conclude whether the system has a solution or not that is the idea. All right. The next case is infinite number of solutions. You already know it I can just rewrite the above equation as x plus y is 2 and 2 x plus 2 y is 4 and therefore, you can see that 0 times x plus 0 times y will be equal to 0 and there will have infinite number of solutions. All right. Now, here I would like you to observe something which is important for us which is the two equations are same. All right. So, the solution is going to be I can write y as some k a real number and then x is equal to 2 minus y which is 2 minus k. Therefore, the solution is x is equal to 2 minus k, y is k and k is arbitrary. All right. So, let us rewrite it this part again in terms of a matrix notation. So, what we see is that these two equations they give us 1 2 corresponding to x plus 1 2 corresponding to y is equal to 2 comma 4. So, if you want to replace x and y here for example, so you can see that that 1 2 times 2 minus k plus 1 2 times k is nothing but 1 2 times 2 which is 2 4 fine. But also I would like you to understand something which is more important for me for the time being is that I have got the solution here for the system of equations the infinite number of solutions. But let us look at the two solutions separately in the sense that I just look at corresponding to what happens to k all right. So, I would like to look at k as a separate part is that okay? So, for k equal to so for k equal to for k equal to 0 we have a solution solution 1 2 times 2 k is 0. So, x is 2 and y is 0 plus 1 2 times 0 is equal to 2 4. Similarly, if I put k equal to 1 all right, we will have a solution which will again be of the type 1 2 times 1 plus 1 2 times 1 which is 2 4 fine. So, here you are not able to see the much difference here. What I am trying to say here is that if I write x and y as 2 minus k comma k which is what we had I can write it as 2 comma 0 plus k times minus 1 comma 1 all right. So, this is important part. So, 2 comma 0 was already used here to get a solution. What is the need of using 2 comma 0 again and again all right. So, if I want to look at the solution space as such set of all solutions what I see is that any linear com any combination for value of k does give me a solution. But if I just look at the part corresponding to k which is minus 1 comma 1 then it has some nice property that 1 2 times. So, look at 1 2 look at this minus 1 plus 1 2 times 1. So, this comes from the x component this comes from the y component and they give you 0 all right. So, what we are saying is that in some sense this vector these two vectors 1 2 and 1 2 they are not invertible because I have got a system of 
a x is equal to 0 or solution of a x equal to 0. So, let us proceed further with these ideas. So, in this case now we are going to solve a system of equation, three equations in three unknowns fine and you already know how to solve it. So, but let me look at this example again and we will come back to it again and again. So, I have the system x plus y plus z is 4, 2 x plus 3 z is 5 and y plus z is equal to 3. This is the system I have all right. Next stage what I can do is that I can multiply the first equation. So, multiply first equation by 4 by 2 and use second equation to remove x component all right fine. So, if I do that the first equation remains as it is it is x plus y plus z is 4 I am multiplying by 2 and subtracting. So, 2 x minus 2 x is going to be 0 times x the next stage will be there is no y here. So, it will be minus 2 y and 3 z minus 2 z is all right 3 z minus 2 z is z. So, I am going to get it as 5 is that ok. So, 5 minus 8 is minus 3 and this I leave it as it is because I there is no component of x here. So, I leave it as it is at the second stage I use these two to make 0 here. So, I multiply this by half and add. So, multiply second equation by half and add to third equation. third equation. So, what I get is x plus y plus z is 4 minus 2 y plus z is minus 3 all right and here I get is 3 upon 2 z is equal to 3 upon 2 and from here I have the system of equation for me as. So, this will imply that z is 1 all right. So, I have done elimination. So, I have done it now I am looking at z is equal to 1. Once z is 1 this will imply that minus 2 y is equal to minus 3 minus z which is same as minus 3 minus 1 which is minus 4 and this gives me y is equal to 2. Now, I can use the first equation to get x is equal to 4 minus y minus z which is 4 minus y is 2 and z is 1. So, I get 1 all right. So, I have got the equation as x y z is equal to 1 to 1 or unique solution. All right. So, I would like you to understand here is that what exactly we have done. So, what exactly we have done is that I have my first equation in that there is a coefficient of x which is non 0. I have used that coefficient to make the first component that is the corresponding to x every coefficient of x to be 0 all right. So, here if I look at the first equation coefficient of x was 1 I have used it to make coefficient of x 0 in the second stage fine. In the third equation there is no coefficient of x so I did not worry about it fine. Now, from second stage to third stage I already see that there is an equation which has x. Now, the other two equations have only y and z fine. Since the other two equations have only y and z I can use my second equation which has a coefficient of y to be non 0 and then use it to make the third equation being independent of x and y both. It was already independent of x now I am making it independent of y also I have done that. So, the third equation now reduces to only coefficient of z 
and therefore I can solve for z and get my answer. Once I have got the value of z, I back substitute the value of z in the second equation, I get the value of y and I use the 2 to substitute it in the first equation where I can get the value of a x. All right. So, this part that getting z equal to 1 and then substituting the values back at the second equation and first equation, this is called back substitution. All right. So, I will come back to this equation again. So, before I come back to that, let us make a general statement about all these things, so that I can come back whenever I feel like. All right. So, definition. So, we have been solving a system of equations, which has been always a square matrix. One equation in one unknown, two equations in two unknowns, three equations in three unknowns. But in general, we would like to look at m equations in n unknowns. So, we are looking at m equations in n unknowns. All right. And our system is going to look like A x is equal to B. So, A is m cross n matrix, x is n cross 1 and B is m cross 1. A is we write it as A 1 1, A 1 2, A 1 n, A 2 1, A 2 2, A 2 n, A m 1, A m 2, A m n. X is x 1, x 2, x n. All right. This is what is called vector of unknowns. Unknowns or vector of unknown variables or vector of variables, whatever you want to say. And B is going to look like B 1, B 2, B m. And generally, we are given that this is known, but in general, this may not be given also. Fine. So, we are going to look at this setup. So, this matrix A has a special name, what is called a coefficient matrix. Fine. And the matrix this, in which A and B come together, this is called an augmented matrix. Fine. So, in the previous example, let us construct back these coefficient matrix and augmented matrix. So, I am going back to the previous slide. All right. So, here my coefficient matrix is going to look like 1, 2, 0. That is, this is the coefficient of x that you are looking at. Now, let us look at coefficient of y. Coefficient of y is 1, 0, 1 and coefficient of z is 1, 3, 1. All right. I do lot of mistakes in calculations, so I'm all, I need to be careful. 1, 1, 1, 2, 0, 3, all right, so it is correct now. So, this is my coefficient matrix, this part, but now if I put b also here, so b is 4, 5, 3. So, I get it as sometimes we will just write it as a b or sometimes as a and b to differentiate the two. So, I have got the augmented matrix here. augmented matrix. All right. I would like to get the augmented matrix for this as well as the third one. So, the second equation for the second one, it is again 1, 0, 0, 1, minus 2, 1, 1, 1, 1 and then 4, minus 3, 3 and the third one, it is 1, 0, 0, 1, minus 2, 0, 1, 1, 3 upon 2, 4 minus 3, 3 upon 2. All right. So, for all the three equation, I have given you the augmented matrix. We will see how to use them and the ideas coming from there. Fine. So, for the time being, I have just got you the augmented matrix for the three parts 
and we will come back to it afterwards again. Thank you.